Good evening, and welcome to our show, Brookfield Public Advocate. I'm your host, Bruce Senek. Tonight, you're in for a special treat. We're going to have four guests, two of whom I'll introduce shortly, and two will join us later in the program. Tonight's topic, the Animal Welfare Society. Our guests are the Animal Welfare Society's Director of PR and Marketing, Susan Kelly, and with her, the Director of Fundraising, Danielle Van Doren. Welcome and thank you for, for joining us. We have lots to cover, so let's get started. Please tell us a little bit about the Animal Welfare Society. The Animal Welfare Society was started in 1965 and we are located in New Milford at 8 Dodd Road and our mission is to find shelter and forever homes for the unwanted pets and stray animals in our community and we um, our hours of adoption are Tuesday 11 until 7 and Wednesday through Saturdays 11 until 2 and we, um, our adoption fees are for cats, it's $100. For kittens, it's $150. For dogs, it's $220. And puppies, it's $270. And we serve, the towns that we serve are New Milford, Bridgewater, Brookfield, Roxbury, Washington. And we just want to find these wonderful animals, forever homes, and get them off the streets. Yeah. All of our yeah. animals have been spayed, neutered, vaccinated, and dewormed at local veterinarians around who donate their time at a low cost to take care of these animals. You can call the shelter with any questions or problems you have with your pets. Uh, we're more than willing to advise you in training issues or questions you have about your pets. Our number is 860-354-1350. And also you can find us on the web at aws-shelter.org. We are also on Facebook. Okay. I think with the end of the show, we'll be putting those the contact information up for, for the audience so they okay. can reach out to okay. you. Uh, if you could tell me a little bit um, how long you've both been involved with, the, with animal welfare. I started with animal welfare seven years ago. As a daily volunteer, I mainly go in, feed, clean, socialize the cats. And in December at the members meeting, I was nominated for um, the director of PR and marketing, which I accepted. And so now my main mission is to get our name out there and that the public knows the services that we have for them and for the animals in the community around town. And Danielle? I started about 10 years ago. I um, came to New Milford um, as a woman who was lost with no way to find a job and it was a bad economy. So at that time I went into uh, welfare and I started volunteering with the pets and it happened to be that our shelter manager said there's a place up the road that's a veterinary um, hospital that's looking for a receptionist. And so I ended up working there. And so I ended up still working with the animals just on the other side, on the veterinary side. And um, I took a two year hiatus to New Mexico and I came back and I really love the animals and I wanted to make some money for them and I, as the director of fundraising I just feel that it's our job to help the shelter grow and able to do what they need to do because they don't have the funds available to them and to take in all the animals and so we want to make as much money as feasible for them to yeah. make it a happy place for the pets to be. Well I have a place in my heart for uh for rescued animals, so I, I, that's one reason why I really wanted to have you on the show because uh, if you, you, you see, for example, in the papers, um, you know some of the pictures of these poor animals that have been abandoned or you know have had tough lives, mm -hmm. and you know, your heart goes out to them. Uh, b before I uh, introduce our two remaining guests, uh, uh, can we put up pictures? I, I'd just like to tell you a little bit about my own family uh, experience with rescued animals. Three years ago, while well, my daughter and son-in-law were finishing their graduate degrees at Penn State, they lived in a building that w wouldn't allow pets. There were several stray cats in the neighborhood, uh, but there was one in particular that uh, they, they just took a liking to and kept following him home to their door. He was disheveled, he was constantly being beat up, 
and my daughter uh, surmises that, at, if, again, if you remember three years ago, that was the beginning of the meltdown with uh, foreclosures and, and the housing market. And she, she surmises that he probably was, was abandoned. Uh, and she started feeding him, brought him inside, uh, tried to bring him to a local animal shelter, but uh, they were full. He was a declawed animal, so you know that he had been owned uh, by, by someone previously. And my, my daughter gave us a call um, for this poor abandoned animal uh, that was left to fend for himself. We, we heard the story. Um, she introduced uh, us to this, this cat. And well, now he resides in Brookfield with us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and last year, um, when my, my daughter uh, is now a teacher at Florida State University, when, when they moved down there, uh, she is kind of a cat person, and she contacted the local, uh, I guess it's down there, the, the uh, Community Humane Society, uh, and she had been on, I guess there's a website, which maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, shortly, but uh, Pet Finder website. They did see a cat uh, that, they, that they liked and they contacted the, the Humane Society. And from, as she tells me, but what happened next really I thought was kind of fascinating. Their procedure was to actually interview her over the phone with um, and my son-in-law uh, and then would bring over the animal. Well, during the interview, I guess something was said or whatever and, and when the foster uh, the animal foster parents, I guess that's the term that we would use, mm -hmm. <laughs> came, came over. They brought two additional ones. So when they arrived, they let the three cats out. The cats could kind of check out my son and daughter-in-law. As it ended up, they uh, st stayed with the one that they uh, found online. That was their original choice, but I just found that process really fascinating. Uh, t tell us a little bit about the uh, you know how many cats and dogs that you that you have at the shelter? We have 63 cats right now, and six kittens are in foster care, and we have 14 dogs, and we have nine hound puppies. They're a month old, and um, one, one litter. One litter, nine wow. puppies. The mom is there on site, and so she has her month-old babies with her. They are just absolutely adorable. And you can see them on Facebook. We're on Facebook, and you can see them on Facebook. Lauren, who is on staff at the shelter, did a video of their first meal. Oh. And it's all on Facebook, and it came out absolutely adorable. It is just so cute. You're going to want to take every one of them. Okay. <laughs> and But no, they're, they're very sweet. And um, yeah, so we are, have a full house. And I wanted to talk, you were talking about the rescue, your rescue. Right. It's, my belief and that rescue animals truly know that they have been rescued and they are the most devoted animals ever. I've had cats and my family have taken in cats that have been rescued and they are just, I honestly think they know and they are so thankful, thankful I, to I, get into I, the good homes. I, I couldn't agree more. This, this cat that uh, you know, we adopted literally follows me around like mm -hmm. a dog. Yeah. And my wife has gotten to call us frickin' frack. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if I go to one room to yeah. the other, um, if the cat's awake or, or near me, it's like yeah. the cat will follow me. So yeah. I, I no, couldn't they, agree with they you They honestly know. He does. And they are, they end up being the most devoted animals ever. My dog actually um, was adopted from Animal Welfare. She came up from the south and she, shortly after she arrived, had developed parvo. And so she um, needed medical treatment for quite a number of weeks. And we fell in love with her and um, she was trained to be a canine good citizen so that she could go into nursing homes and hospitals and just be with people. And in the process I had no idea why it was she couldn't stay centered on a leash. And so I asked the trainer, why is it she can't just stay in one place? She goes, you're not walking right. I have multiple sclerosis. This picked up on the fact that I had multiple sclerosis and was trying to get, keep me centered. No and that's kidding. why she never stayed on the correct side of the leash. She was telling me, no, 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 I have to be on this side to keep you center. Wow. And so she has become a service dog for me in the meantime. 
that's terrific. Yeah, so she's a really, that is, that is just goes story. to show. Yeah. Yeah. Just goes to show that animals from a shelter aren't damaged. They actually no. just deserve a new leash on life. Yeah. Exactly. Well, now I'd, I'd like to introduce our uh, remaining two guests. <laughs> Representing the feline world is Thief, a male cat who steals your heart. And representing God, the canine yes. world is Winifred, uh, as you can see, a very loving dog. Okay, this is Thief. He is a gorgeous 12-year-old Persian, and he is just so sweet and social, as you can see. And he came to us, he has three, came with three sisters. One is a Seal Point Siamese, the other is a Himalayan, and a all black oriental type of cat. And they're all 12 years old. The owners had gotten them all at the same time. And they, she had to sign them over to us. And because they are 12 years old, they would be, they're great um, for our senior program. We have a senior cat for senior citizens program. So any senior 60 years of age and older can adopt a cat that's six years and older for no adoption fee. So someone, a senior could come and adopt this beautiful Persian, no charge, or the Siamese, the Himalayans, and um, we do have many more senior cats. But a, considering a cat, a senior at six years old is not old. They still have many, many years left. All right. And, um, we would like him to be adopted out with his sister Ebony, the all black cat, because they are very close together. Um, they might be able to go separately, but the Siamese and the Himalayan definitely have to go together, be adopted together, because they're inseparable. They sleep entwined with each other really? all the time, and they definitely are each other's um, support system. So they would have to go together. So there someone would be able to get two purebred cats for free. That's terrific. Yeah, and they're... The whiskers on cat. him or something. Oh, he's gorgeous. I'm hoping his, those eyes and his Smile face for the camera. Up. I mean, he's gorgeous. <laughs> and he's so laid back. And this is That's Winifred. Winifred was a owner sign over also to our shelter. Um, she is a purebred cream colored Pomeranian. And basically the owners had children and could no longer keep her because she's full of energy. She's got a lot of energy to give. She's a bouncy type of gal. And they just basically didn't have the time for her that she really, really, really needed. And um, she is quite the doll. She w thinks she's a very, very big dog in a very, very little dog body. <laughs> but um, she is a, a just a superstar in the f terms of um, she just needs a little training. You know, they didn't spend a lot of time training her. But other than that, you've got another purebred dog for a fraction of the cost what it would cost to go buy one at a pet exactly. store. And I didn't really time how long the two of you have been here with the two additional guests, but uh, that, that dog has been, uh, there hasn't been a peep out of that dog. No. Well, extremely well behaved. Yes. She is. She, she is. is. And Thief will just lay on your lap for days on end. Yep. She yep. thinks that a lap is the best thing in the world. And <laughs> Winifred just needs a little exercise. She is definitely one of those dogs that needs to go about and do her, her daily And she's routine. still young. I don't know oh, if she's a, she's, a, she's, she's a, a year. She's, a, she's just over a year just old. A year. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what do you do? When the dogs grow up, unfortunately, people don't realize how big they're going to get. A lot of people get small puppies and think they're going to stay puppies. And right. unfortunately, they don't stay little. Well, Winifred won't get too much Winifred bigger. Is, we'll Winifred is full grown. Full grown, yeah. okay. Winifred is not getting any bigger. <laughs> <laughs> look at that, that, look at that face. Yeah, fun. Yeah. That happy face. That's yeah. just that they're always smiling. They, they really smiling. They look smile like always smiling. Great companion. 